like a wow, 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 wow. Baby, come back to the bed and the barrel. Bed and the moon. Where was something? And everything's about you. Wow, wow, wow. Sorry. I do not feel good right now. No, thank you for asking. The volleyball was fine. The post-volleyball drinking session was also fine. But when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, my friends, I know y'all stayed up late for this video. If you're actually here, then I appreciate the hell out of you. But my goodness, the Vancouver Canucks just lost four games in a row, and I didn't see any of this game. Like, we were at the bubble tea shop, and there was a Sportsnet replay going on, so I did see, like, the highlights after the game, but I didn't spend any time to actually sit down and watch it. But based off of the social media reaction, based off of the memes, based off of the Instagram posts and the tweets, I feel like we can make a commentary just about this by itself. Baby, come back, man! Dakota Joshua, please! Come back! Andre Kuzmenko, please, come back! The team sucked ever since Dakota Joshua left the lineup. The team has not been able to be dominant ever since Andre Kuzmenko left. Elias Lindholm, who? Philip Pronik, first power play, who? This team does not know how to get things done. They forgot that you're supposed to score on your power plays. Oh no! No! Why? Come on, guys! What's happening here? Rick Tockett said after this game, Vancouver versus Seattle, by the way, yeah, the Canucks played the Kraken and they lost 4 2. Rick Tockett said that a lot of the players just did not show up that it was on him that too many of these players no-showed. And you know who actually didn't no-show? At least according to what I'm seeing from social media, Arshdeep Baines. He went out there and competed. Rick Tockett, according to some of the tweets, did not bench Baines in any capacity. You had other guys that were benched. Ilya Mikheyev comes to mind. Hey, what's going on with that guy? He's MIA. We had talked about this a few videos ago. He had one shift in the third period, something like that. Niels Alman had so many shots in this game. Just kidding, the guy didn't do much. Sam Lafferty scored himself a goal, which is cool. But in a game where the depth shows up in a very limited way, you need your top guys. Come on, Pedersen. What's going on here, buddy? Like, we talked about this earlier today. Is this guy really worth 12 mil? Like, he's top 10 in the league in scoring. He's super young. He's going to get better. He's going to have multiple... Top tier seasons, he's on pace for 100 points. Is he still? I don't know. Did he get an assist on the Miller goal? I have no idea. But this is supposed to be your franchise altering $12 million superstar? I don't know, man. Like, the team's going through a tough stretch. At the end of the day, we know the talent level of this team is better than what we're seeing. And as of late, is it more than just no shows? Is it a lot more of no luck? Is part of it due to the fact that this team just has not had a proper power play structure that's gone well for them the past few weeks? Their power play was on fire at the beginning of the season. I know this because I personally had them all in fantasy. I had Kuzi, Pedersen, Miller, and Hughes all on fantasy, and they were all doing really well. And then Kuzmenko stopped scoring, dropped him. He's in Calgary now. Sayonara, he's doing his thing. The team started to play a little bit differently and debatably worse when he was removed from the roster and Elias Lindholm came in. Now Pedersen and Hughes, these guys are rarely getting as many points as they did in the past. I benched Hughes today. You know that? I benched him for Jamie Oleksiak, Adam Larson, Shea Theodore, and a bunch of other guys, and I made the right decision because Hughes didn't do much. My goodness, how much gosh darn time on ice did he have in this game? 29 minutes, and he had four shots. That's it. My goodness, thank you, Oleksiak and Larson, for getting some blocks. Thank you, Shea Theodore and Truba, for getting a ton of blocks and some assists on top of that. I made the right choice in benching Quinn Hughes. I don't know if I want to say I'm losing faith in this team, but it's kind of crazy how the turning point seems to have been that Andre gosh darn Kuzmenko trade. Baby, come back, man. Please. This is what we need. And no, I'm not saying the Canucks should go out there and trade for Kuzmenko again. I'm just saying it figuratively, you know? Like, baby, come back. Dakota Joshua, he's been out. You could really see there's a spark missing from this team ever since he stepped out. And even though Arshdeep Baines has looked fine, 
Man, oh man, is this a stretch that I think we may start to have to worry about. And I had said it earlier today in the video talking about the Pedersen and... What was it? Who the hell did we talk about? Pedersen and Bergeron, that's who it was. I made the video saying, yeah, like, I mean, three games in a row? It's the first time all season they've lost three games in a row? That's not that bad. The fact they made it this far without losing three straight means something. And now they've lost four. So at what point do you go out there and start considering this a problem? Because just based off of the social media reaction, like, again, I'm apologizing for not actually having watched the game, but just based off of what everybody is saying, like, you can tell this is a fan base that is not used to losing anymore. Like, all of the doom and gloom and pessimism, cynicism, and just overall bad negative vibes from the past few years of the Bruce Boudreaux and the Greens and the Willie Desjardins, all those vibes are coming back out into the forefront. Because as a Vancouver Canucks fan base that has suffered through so much crap hockey over the past few years, we always knew that this side of us existed. We always knew that this side of the team still had the possibility of bringing it out of us. And now after four straight losses in a season that has been all sunshines and rainbows, this is the first adversity of the year. They have some guys who are injured, yes. They have some guys that are not showing up, yes. But this team, with a performance like that against Seattle, a lackluster, no-show performance from some of the guys you expect no no-show performances from ever? Hey, is that guy really worth 12 million bucks? Come on, man. EP40, 12 million a season. Aye, aye, aye. I get it, the cap's going up, and I get it, there's other players making similar dollar amounts that you could say Pedersen is better than, but that's when he's on his game. Hasn't been on his game a lot the past few weeks. What are we doing here? I think it was Nux Meme. Yeah, it was Nux Memes on Instagram that made the post here. Dakota Joshua, come back. Andre Kuzmenko, come back. Tyler Mott, come back. Louis Erickson, come back. Radim Verbata, come back. Marcus Granlin, okay, we're probably fine without you. Mikheyev got benched. Neil Zaman, were you even playing today? Arthur Silovs, get called up. And then Jake Furtanen is at the end. F you. There is a lot of cynicism going around here, and this is so indicative of the Canucks fan base of yesteryear. When they were losing all those games at the beginning of the season, that was the craziest and honestly most out-of-pocket time to be a fan of this team. Not because we would cheer for good things, but because we would cheer against everything piss poor that would have happened. And now we acknowledge that side of us still exists, this team can dig it out of us, and all of a sudden it's an entirely new era of Canucks hockey that we are not used to seeing in this season's worth of play. Four straight losses, all in regulation too, like, oy oy oy, that is not a good record for a team that's looking to maintain its first overall spot in the National Hockey League. Are they even still first? I didn't check this, let's go out there and check this right now, let's go to league standings and see, yep, no, Boston, first overall in the NHL in points percentage and in points, they have the tiebreaker on Vancouver. And the Canucks are now fourth overall in points percentage. Yikes. That's what four losses goes out there and does to you, eh? That's what it is. No shows, baby. That's what the Vancouver Canucks have showed off the past little while here. If you're a Canucks fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this 4-2 loss to the Seattle Kraken. I didn't break down the game, but I did talk a little bit about it, which I feel is enough for me considering my mental state and... The fact that it's past midnight and I'm recording a commentary just kind of half asleep and half awake. So let me know your thoughts about this Canucks game. I'm sorry to y'all who are waiting for this video, but hey, we kind of had to get the emotions through, right? We had to get everything inspired and implied in the right way for this video. So thoughts in the comment section below about the political and economical state of the Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.